As we start our journey on the study of the physics of fluid mechanics, it's probably a good idea to define what is a fluid, right? We want to understand what we're studying, really. And a fluid really is any substance that flows, right? That's kind of the easy answer. The more technical answer is any substance that continuously deforms when acted upon by a shear force. And here I just have the definition laid out, right? Any substance that continuously deforms when acted upon by a shear force. And you're probably saying, Calvin, why do you emphasize continuously so weird? Well, that's because that is really an important part of what a fluid is. And to really understand this, I think the best way to look at this is through a couple examples. So say we have, this is the ground, say we have a big metal block sitting on this ground, right? And to this block, if we applied some type of an external shear force to the block, what do you think would happen to the block? Well, the block would deform a little bit in the direction of the given force, right? By some amount delta x. But eventually the block will stop deforming given that the, you know, external shear force here is reasonable. But the main point here is that after some given displacement, the block will most likely stop deforming, right? Or in other words, the block will not continuously deform, right? So say in another scenario here, instead of a big metal block, let's say that we had some body of water, right? This is water. So this is not a big metal block anymore, it's just some body of water. And to this body of water, we applied that same external shear force over some type of surface to the body of water. Well, the question here is, is the body of water going to deform similar to the block of metal? Well, obviously not. And in fact, the body of water is going to deform continuously so long as this force is applied. So you can see why this part of the definition continuously deforms is so important, right? In the case of the metal block, it's going to stop eventually. And in the body of water, so long as that force is being applied, it's always going to deform, right? All the water molecules are always going to be moving uh, past one another and sliding past one another as long as that force is being applied. Okay, so here's a question. Why is it that the body or the metal block will stop deforming after some displacement. Well, if we zoomed into this metal block, we could see all the molecules that make up this, you know, box of metal or this metal box. The molecular bonds between these molecules are very, very strong. All of the molecules, the molecular bonds that make up this metal body those bonds are very, very strong, and they're strong enough to overcome this external shear force applied to it, right? So after some displacement, the bonds are going to have a much stronger force, and that will counteract the shear force acting on the block. Whereas the body of water, if we zoomed in to you know a small part of this body of water, well, you're going to see something similar, right? You're going to see all these water molecules packed against one another. But the molecular bonds here, the bonds between each of these water molecules, they are very, very weak. And so it's very easy to move water molecules around, but it's very difficult to move metal molecules around, right? If you place your hand in this body of water and you moved your hand back and forth, yeah, you're gonna get wet, but more than likely the water molecules are gonna slide past your hand, slide past one another, and it's pretty easy to move your hand around in a body of water. Whereas if you stuck your hand into a metal box, one, that would hurt. Two, the bonds are so strong that you're gonna have to have a lot of force going through your hand, pushing these molecules around to get it to move. And more than likely, you're probably not going to have enough force to move those molecules around, right? Because of those molecular bonds they are very, very strong. 
So now the question really is, how do we classify fluids based on these molecular bonds, right? We've been talking about how molecular bonds in this scenario, they're very, very strong. In bodies of water, they're very, very weak. But how do we actually classify fluids based on these molecular behaviors, really? Well, for that, we'll see you guys in the next video.